Recently, several commenters have asked me about quantized inertia. And so, me being an equal opportunity debunker, I have to say that quantized inertia is nonsense. And for those who aren't familiar with the theory of quantized inertia, a man named Mike McCulloch came up with what he called his modified inertia by a Hubble scale Casimir effect, shortened, abbreviated MIHSC. And in this, he assumes that an accelerated observer has what they call a Rindler horizon. And that's pretty simple that if, if you start accelerating continually, indefinitely, you eventually approach the speed of light. So it's possible if you have a photon emitted, say, 100 light years away, and you have 100 years to get to the speed of light, that that photon may never catch up to you, or will never catch up to you. And so that distance, whatever it is, is called the Rindler horizon, because it means that a person that far away can never communicate with the accelerating observer, the person in the rocket ship or whatever. Now, of course, in reality, this isn't possible with current technology because it requires an infinite amount of energy to accelerate to the speed of light. And so it's not, not practical in that sense, but it's still interesting. Now, what the theory proposes is that at the Rindler horizon, you would get light being emitted, the same way you get Hawking radiation emitted at the event horizon of the black hole. So this causes there to be light, and this is called Unruh radiation. And this, or Foline Davies Unruh radiation, the long name. And this causes space to have a higher temperature from the standpoint of the observer that's accelerating. But for a normal observer that's not accelerating, they don't have the effect. So then what Mike McCullough considered is that if you have an observer here, you have a Rindler horizon maybe 100 light years away here, and then you may have the boundary of the universe way out here um, at 13 billion light years. And that this creates, in his mind, two cavities, two Casimir cavities, where you can get oscillations of the inner radiation waves. And he considers this to create a differential in pressure that will either accelerate the body or provide inertial effects to the body. So it's a rather simple idea, um, but it has a lot of problems with just the basic elements. The first problem is that quantum fluctuations are not going to be affected by an accelerating observer. If you have an a quantum fluctuation, particle pair oscillating, and you have an observer a hundred light years away who just kicked on his rocket engines, that's not going to affect the quantum fluctuation. The quantum fluctuation is affected by the quantum fluctuations that are nearby, and possibly planets or stars that are in the immediate vicinity, for the most part. It's not going to be affected by some rocket that's so far away that there's not enough time for a signal to travel under the speed of light. So that assumption is false right there. So they're not affected by the rocket's Rindler horizon. So quantum fluctuations are not converted into photons. Basically there's no lunar radiation. It's a false assumption. 
We can also see it from the standpoint in the radiation that the accelerating observer sees a different reality from a non-accelerating observer. But when we're considering the quantum fluctuation, either the quantum fluctuation annihilates and all the energy goes away, or something happens and it gets converted to light. It can't do both. Both realities can't exist simultaneously. So you can't have owner being owner radiation being produced in one hand and not produced in another. Either it is or it isn't. And then we have the problem that the Rindler horizon does not exist in the quantum field because of this. So it's not a boundary that the radiation, if there were radiation, would be oscillating against. It's not a solid boundary. And also, the so-called boundary of the universe isn't a boundary either. In quantum field theory, there's no boundary to the quantum field. There's no boundary to space. So this is a fictitious boundary that was made up to support the Big Bang model. The fictitious idea that there could be space that isn't space without quantum fluctuations, which in quantum field theory is nonsense. Space is just a container for the quantum field and the quantum field is everywhere. So these boundaries, these so-called Casimir cavities can't exist which means that quantized inertia can't exist in the form that Mike McCullough has imagined it. So there are other problems more generally. The quantum field reality is defined by the local quantum fluctuations in the quantum field rest frame. And this is one of the problems with how the inner radiation effect came about that if you assume there's no rest frame, then you have to treat every frame of reference as a separate reality, potentially. But if you have a rest frame, then you have to base reality on what's happening in the rest frame, first and foremost, and then extrapolate into other frames of rest reference. So, because there is a rest frame and quantum fluctuations, reality is defined by interactions in the rest frame while it interacts with local quantum fluctuations. You don't have the inner radiation effect. And as I said previously, there's no separate realities associated with separate frames of reference. There's only one reality, either the quantum fluctuations annihilate or they produce radiation. And so the owner effect is nonsense. And I'll do a separate video and go in more detail on that. And it's also confused with the dynamical Casimir effect, which isn't really a Casimir effect, but it's called that. And you can think of that in terms of the rocket ship is accelerating through space. It has an opportunity of hitting a quantum fluctuation before the quantum fluctuation annihilates and then give it enough energy to convert it to light. So you can get light being emitted off a rapidly moving or accelerating object. And that's one of the theories, if you're familiar with sonoluminescence or cavitation bubbles, they give off a flash of light. And one of the theories is that as a bubble collapses very rapidly, it converts the quantum fluctuation energy combined with the kinetic energy of the water, whatever the solvent is, and that produces light. And the dynamical Casimir effect actually is normally thought of as the spinning mirror problem. If you spin a mirror fast enough, you can have black body radiation light being emitted off the surface of the spinning mirror. 
as the kinetic energy of the mirror gets converted to light by interacting with individual quantum fluctuations. And so if you read about people that are experimenting with trying to produce inner radiation, it almost always comes down to their reproducing the dynamical Casimir effect. And then there's a problem if we consider a gyroscope and gyroscopic motion that quantized inertia doesn't work at small scales. When you have a spinning object, you have inertia from that spinning object. It's interacting with the quantum field, giving it the inertia in a form of self-induction. It's not interacting because of some Rindler horizon off the distance or the horizon of the visible universe. And we also know that because the speed is limited to the speed of light. And the speed of light is due to the permittivity and permeability of the quantum field, the electric and magnetic constant. Or in the case of a neutral body, there may be a non-electric and non-magnetic constant for neutral bodies that happen to have exactly the same value because the speed of light limit is the same for neutral bodies as it is for charged bodies. And since electrical inertia based on self-induction, where charge moves, quantum dipoles rotate, quantum dipoles rotating keeps the charge moving. That's how electrical inertia works. So in order for the speed of light limit to be the same for non-electric bodies, neutral bodies, you still have to have the same type of interaction with the quantum field in order to explain local inertia. So quantized inertia doesn't really explain inertia at all. And as I said, the owner radiation can't really exist because it defies reality. So quantized inertia is nonsense. And so I know some of you are hopeful that this was an alternative theory that maybe would go somewhere and help us answer some questions, but this one isn't. And that's the case with most alternative theories. Even, I mean, those published in mainstream publication and those from crackpots, the vast majority of new theories aren't going to pan out. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do, Please give it a like, share it with your physicist friends, subscribe for my next ones, and I have some books for sale if you'd like to learn more about my research in quantum field theory and particle theory, and I'm sure you'd learn a lot from them. So thanks for watching.